Benvenuto, and welcome to the Capo for Christ channel, where we shed the light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth into a world that gets darker and darker. Today we're going to be talking about Jesus, King of Tartaria and the Renaissance, hidden truths about King James revealed as well. So let's get started, shall we? Before we delve into this message, we need to talk about evil, okay? Evil today is so depraved that it shows its true nature, whereas evil in the past existed during the millennial reign, but it was not demonic in nature, but still around during the millennial reign nonetheless, due to the nature of men's hearts. This allowed for subtle deviant behavior that changed the truth of Christ for a lie. Examples are the origin of the Catholic Church, better known as the whore of Babylon that rides the beast with a cup full of her abominations. More recent examples that have sprung up are the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormon cults. They are prime examples of showing a form of godliness but denying the power of God altogether. In my opinion, giving God a bad look is worse than denying his existence at all altogether. Today, the satanic agenda does not hide itself at all. It's run by Satan himself since he's been loosed and not some wicked man with his heart turned away from God. As the scripture of Jesus quotes about the man making it to the wedding supper of the lamb, but missing his wedding garment. Remember, Jesus said to take this person away and cast them into outer darkness. Evil today is run by a fallen angel that was kicked out of heaven. This is Satan, cast to the earth, imprisoned at some point for a thousand years. And finally, he was released from his prison for a short time. This is the period that we are living in now, the little season. Since he has been freed, Satan has stolen the world that Jesus created during the millennial reign. Satan is about to appear in the flesh on the world stage and have his antichrist kingdom for a short time before God crushes his rebellion finally once and for all and creates a new heaven and a new earth. So now let's move on to the controversy of King James, the king that had the King James Bible written or interpreted, I should say. Now, before we do, though, I want to say that I use the King James Bible for all of my readings, most of my readings for my teachings. I fully endorse it. It is one of the best interpretations that you can get today. The interlinear is a excellent Bible to have if you want to go back and study the Greek and the Hebrew actual words. It has the actual words in English and then it's transliterated with the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance numbers. That's the interlinear. But the King James is absolutely an amazing Bible to use. King James himself was not such an amazing person. We have to begin with the whitewashing of history. There was a black nobility. There were a lot of black rulers. There are ancient uh, pictures of Renaissance paintings of uh, Jesus as black, the saints as black. Abraham Lincoln was even black in some of this stuff. Back to our controversy about our good buddy King James. Was he black or white? Well, we know he was a sodomite. We know he was from Scottish descent, but still the King of England. And we know that he was a Freemason. And one thing I can tell you is that through any controversy or any lie, there is a bit of truth that is revealed in it. So let's unpack some of these lies and truths about King James. There's actually four King Jameses, so no, let's not get them confused. The one who wrote the Bible is King James I, born in Edinburgh Castle, June 19th, 1566. He dies on March 27th, 1625. He was a member of the Stuart family of the Jacobite Rebellion. I'm not going to get into all the intricacies of the Jacobite Rebellion or really any of it. I, I might do a video about it separately. King James IV, however, was the fourth Baron of Kingston, born in 1693 on December 26th, and he lived until 1761. Pay attention to these dates. He was a British member of the Peerage, 
The king was a prominent Freemason, being the Grand Master of, he was the Grand Master of the Premier Grand Lodge of England for 1728 through 1730, and also Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Ireland for 1731 to 1732, and 1735 to 1736, as well as his involvement in Freemasonry in England and Ireland. He also was involved in Freemasonry in France, what is he doing in all these areas, okay? The origins of Freemasonry, they like to say, are obscure. The creation of the craft, as it is so called, occurred over time, they say, between the first recorded gentlemen joining an Edinburgh Stonemasons Lodge in 1599. These are the dates of the first King James who had the Bible written and the 1721 publication in London of the Constituents, Constitutions of the Freemasons by Scots Presbyterian Minister James Anderson. Before the King James Bible, there was the Geneva Bible in the 1500s. But since then, uh, the King James Bible was the first people's Bible but its poetic cadences and vivid imagery have had an enduring influence on Western culture. In 1604, England's King James I authorized, as we said, a new translation of the Bible aimed at settling some thorny religious differences in his kingdom and solidifying his own power. He had 47 scholars and clergymen over the course of many years do this translation from the Hebrew and Greek into English. He did this for his own political gain, not because he was a godly man or a scholarly person. Let's get that straight. To thoroughly unravel this King Jesus of the Renaissance in Tartaria, we have to reconcile something because there was holy Roman emperors, there were kings and there were popes. Who was the boss hog of all these three? Or were they all lies? Or were the, was it possible that Jesus was actually portrayed as all of these in their artwork? Let's break down what the holy emperor and king's differences were. In a monarchy, an emperor and king are both rulers of a land, but the power associated with them is different. They can be compared to regional manager and CEO of a company today. An empire can have many kingdoms within it. The emperor rules the entire empire while kings or queens rule small, smaller kingdoms within the empire. We are now going to go through various Holy Roman Emperor portraits of the Renaissance, the so-called Renaissance era, and King Charles I and various King Charles's paintings. They had many different King Charles's. They loved to fool people throughout history. We're also going to go through a lot of uh, stained glass portraits of who I believe was Jesus Christ in this so-called Renaissance, King of Tartaria. I think it was the same guy, meaning an archetype of Jesus. I've showed a painting of a Russian Jesus, black Jesuses, uh, Chinese Jesuses, white Jesuses. I think this archetype is actually based off of the same person and they just... Uh, continue to fool people throughout history. They have whitewashed history. Uh, obviously, people were melanated in those days. There was a black nobility, and they have just destroyed history so bad. So I leave it in your guys' hands. Look at all of these Renaissance stained glass paintings and portraits of Holy Roman emperors, Charlemagne and Charles's. Is it all Jesus Christ in the end? We know that it is. The Renaissance was a perfect hijack for them to take the ending of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the saints of God when they went to true north and they created or they stole these images, they buried them in history, they changed the colors and the ethnicities of Jesus, They've done all these things. They've created all these fake kings and emperors and poopy popes and rotten Vatican kingdoms, all to get the Antichrist kingdom ready, which is about to take center stage. Brothers and sisters in Christ, look at these pictures. 
how else can we make sense of all this? It doesn't make any sense other than to fool you. God bless each and every one of you. I pray for nothing but strength and blessings in your family and for you guys to fulfill your destinies and your callings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Reach out if you need anything, and we will see you guys on the next one. God bless you. Amen.